In this video, we're going to be walking through a simple design approach to showing and hiding visual elements in your app's design. If you're not paying attention to this, you know, at best, your users are going to have a poor experience, but at worst, you could run into security issues where data and any part of your design might be exposed to users who shouldn't have access to it. This is something that you want to implement. It doesn't take too long to do, and it's a best practice that you should get in the habit of doing for any complexity of app. This way, you give your users a great, clean experience and you can protect their information as well. In your application, you may have one or more conditionally visible elements, uh, things that, you know, depending on who the user is and what their relationship is to other areas of the app, data, other elements designed on the page, you may want to show or hide those things. So here's a quick example. I have a group here, and this group contains three uh, visual elements that not only should only be shown to a user who's logged in, but are only going to work if the user's logged in to display you know, their name, their photo here, and to trigger an action that, again, is only relevant for a logged in user. Now, there's a lot of different ways to approach this. There's a common approach that I see coming up all the time that has a flaw in it. So this group, by default, is visible immediately upon page load. So if we go to the Layout tab, you see that this is checked. This is your default setting whenever you add an element to your design canvas. And what I usually see is a workflow getting created so that when the user is detected to be logged out, it's going to then hide that group, right? If we know that the user is not logged in, we don't need to show them that group because it wouldn't be relevant for them. It wouldn't even work properly. And so we hide the group, right? This is a, an event here for users logged out, right? It's just waiting for Bubble to, sit, to detect that they've been logged out. But here's the flaw. I'm going to show you. I'm going to refresh the page in this preview. All right, I am currently logged out right now, and I want you to see what happens here. All right, there's the group for a moment, and then it disappeared. Now, in some cases, that might be a quicker flash. In others, it might take a little bit longer for that, um, that uh, conditional check or, you know, in the workflows to happen on Bubble's end. That's, we don't want that. We don't want that flash of that design to come up for the user. Number one, it can be really disorienting and, you know, you know, the user can think that something's broken. Um, it's just not clean. It's not very professional looking. Uh, and, you know, you risk the user uh, seeing information or designs that they really should not be allowed to see. Okay, you've shown them for a moment a design that is meant to be hidden from them. Uh, and we don't want to do that. What we want instead is for the user, if they're logged out, to see a clean page that is designed specifically for the logged in experience and then intentionally show that group when they are logged in. So you basically want to reverse the logic so that by default, if there's a conditionally visible um, element, by default, hide it, right? So that you're safe. You want to play it safe here. By default, it should be hidden. And then you want to create your conditions or your workflows to then you know, intentionally show the element. So here's the difference. I'm going to um, go into the layout tab of this group and I'm going to turn off this setting. This element is visible on page load. We're going to disable that so that it's not visible on page load. And in the workflow, I'm going to reverse the, 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 the conditional check here. I'm going to remove that event and I'm going to go off of the other event. When the user is logged in, then I'm going to show that group, right? We're doing the complete reverse and it's a safer type of flow because it ensures the user doesn't see, even for a brief second, um, designs that they're not supposed to, you know, let alone they're, they're just not going to populate properly if you have dynamic information in there uh, that we're refreshing right now. Um, yeah, the dynamic information in there that won't be able to populate. So you see that as I, when I refresh that page, we didn't see that flash because I'm not logged in my, my workflow is never going to move forward. It, you know, it's Bubble's not going to uh, uh, pass that conditional check for me. And so it's never going to get a chance to show. This is a much safer uh, flow and also cleaner uh, for your user's experience. Now, like I said earlier, this isn't the only way to accomplish this sort of thing. You can also put conditions on your groups directly. So I'm going to disable this workflow for now and show you here on the main content group, I can go into my conditions and I can add a condition of when the current user is logged in, then we're going to make the group visible. This is another way to do it. So if I refresh the page, 
again, I'm still logged out right now. I should not see a flash because the condition is never going to pass until I log in. So we're going to wait for this refresh. You see that, right? No flash, no risk of seeing a group that I'm not supposed to see. So I do want to real quick run as a user so that you can see what the experience is like for a logged in person. Really, it's just that they're going to see the, the group immediately up upon page load. You see there, I'm running as Ross right now. So the group is visible, the condition is passing, the condition's still on the group, um, but it would behave the exact same if I had used that workflow. Now, whether you use a workflow or a condition really just depends on what your design is. The point is, is that by default, the visibility setting of these elements, um, you know, a lot of times I find that when you hide them first, you get a much cleaner experience um, for the user on the front end. And it's a little bit safer to, to not expose uh, any information you don't want to. Your app may have very different circumstances. You may need to wait not on page load uh, to determine whether you know they're passing a condition or not, but you, you may have uh, a workflow sequence that makes a condition become true as a result of that workflow sequence. You also may have multiple designs with lots of different elements that have various conditions to show or hide certain things. What I have here is a very simple example, but imagine a larger dashboard with lots of different modules, all kind of designed on the same screen. And depending on who the user is, certain things may show or hide, you know, consider different user roles and permissions. There may be varying levels of access to different things designed on the page. So this concept can be applied, you know, at whatever complexity you have in your application. But I found that consistently, no matter how big or small your app is, if you have conditionally visible elements, decide whether, you know, consider whether it would actually be cleaner and safer to hide those, those things by default and create very specific logic to turn them on, right? To make them visible. All right, if any of this has been helpful, definitely check out the content you see on the screen right now. These videos will help you better build and launch your app and a lot more quickly too.